It's an honor to be before you today. I don't take this lightly each time we get up. We trust the Lord and we want God to have his way, whatever he wants to do. Praise the Lord. And I'm, I thank God for his loving kindness and his tender mercy. Father, we thank you again for this time. And we ask now as we go into the word that, Lord, you would, God, lead God and direct and let your perfect and complete and whole will be done in the mighty name of Jesus. We ask, dear Lord, that you minister to every heart, every life. Father, we stand in need of you, but we know that you are the need meter. You come to supply every need. So we thank you, Father. We praise you now. Let your perfect, complete, and whole will be done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Tonight I want to minister on deliverance and healing from unforgiveness and bitterness. Deliverance and healing from unforgiveness and bitterness. One of the things that could really hold us up in our life is not being able to forgive. You can even hold yourself in bondage by not forgiving yourself. So I'm not going to get ahead of myself, but, but I pray that we understand the importance of forgiveness. says Hebrews chapter 12 verses 14 and 15 it says follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord looking diligently lest any man fail of the grace of God lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. So the word peace means freedom from disturbance or agitation. Freedom from agitation or disturbance by the passions or as from fear, terror, anger, anxiety, or the like quietness of mind, tranquility and calmness, quiet of conscience and harmony, concord, a state of reconciliation between parties at variance. It means to be reconciled or to live in harmony. I know that's a lot, but I agree with my sister Jean. You can get the tape if you didn't get it all, okay? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Holiness is the state of being holy or pure or walking in integrity or moral character. It's freedom from sin. Anybody tell you that you cannot be free from sin is wrong. You can be free from sin. Come on. You don't have to be hung up. By the enemy. Some people believe more in the enemy and what he does than God. And it shows by sometimes your speech. Your speech can betray you. You do know that, right? The Bible says you could be snared by the words of your mouth, caught in a trap, okay, just by what you say. So we have to understand that Jesus did not die in vain, and the enemy does not have all power. Y'all missed that. He does not have all power. God has all power. All power is in his hands. Come on. Amen. All power. Thank you, Jesus. And he wants you to be endued with power from on high. That's what the Holy Spirit will do for us. Okay. Holiness is purity of heart, to be sanctified consecrated to God and separated to service to God. Now, what's bitterness? Bitter gall. No one would take gall and drink it, right? Hello? Hello? <laughs> no, you would not do that because they tried to give Jesus gall and he refused it. It was that vinegary stuff to numb his pain, but he did not take that. He suffered all the pain on the cross. He didn't take anything to numb himself. 
but gall is very bitter and it's like um um i can't think of the word in your stomach when you have all that yuck stuff uh that reflux stuff that come to acid it's, it's acidy stuff and it's it's like it's you no know, the acid the acid that will burn your stomach that's what gall will do gall will do that okay so when you have bitterness down on the inside it can burn you up, turn into cancer, okay? It's extreme wickedness. I'm talking about bitterness, okay? Extreme enmity, to have a grudge and hate, an excess degree of implacableness impluc of passions and emotions, bitter anger, okay? According to Ephesians 4.31, is sharp severity of temper, bit biting sarcasm. Have you ever talked to somebody they were so sarcastic? Okay, and you could tell that they didn't like this or that. Okay, you could tell by the tone of their voice. So when you when you have a grudge and when you have something against someone and you don't get it straight after a while, it could turn to bitterness. Okay, and God does not want us to have that kind of stuff in our heart toward anyone. Okay. Bitter roots produce bitter fruit. Now, the word defile means to be foul and polluted. Soil, soiled, corrupted, and contaminated. Okay? Forgiveness is a must. In order to be healed from pain and suffering that comes from being wounded, you must be willing to forgive completely. God accepts nothing less. Jesus forgives us when we ask him, and we must have the same heart, and that is to forgive unconditionally. God requires that we forgive. To not forgive leaves you vulnerable to the consequences of unforgiveness. There is a high price to carry unforgiveness. It may be cancer, heart congestion or heart failure, high blood pressure. But the fatal disease that can really carry you out is bitterness. Bitterness goes deep and becomes rooted. Bitterness can hide for a long time before one has symptoms that materialize into a serious condition. So how do you know if you have unforgiveness? Proverbs 14 and 10 says, the heart knoweth his own bitterness and a stranger doth not intermeddle with, the, with his joy. So anger can be displayed with temp temper tantrums, hurt feelings, anger out, outbursts. And you know, people often say hurt people, hurt people. That's true. If you're not healed, you'll strike like you were struck at if you're not careful. Come on. So we have to be careful that even in hurt, we don't turn and hurt somebody else. Because in your mind, you could say, well, I'll feel better if I see them hurting. But you really won't. Anybody ever did that? I know you ain't going to give me any hands, but you know. But if you have, thank you, Hannah. You know what you do? Thank you, baby, for being honest. You be honest, first of all, right? And then you say, well, you know what? I don't want that. You got to repent of it. Get right with God. Hallelujah. Okay. Anger is displayed as a way to get back for the pain one feels. Anger will not be resolved until the root cause is exposed and dealt with. A lot of times we're dealing with people and we see anger, we want to get to the root. And sometimes it's layers, you know, a multiplicity of things that can cause a person to be so angry. You understand? Okay. How do you know if you have unforgiveness? Number two, criticism. Constant negative observations. Always seeing the negative in others. Able to point out others' faults and shortcomings. Number three, jealousy or envy. 
This comes as a result of insecurity. Okay. Number four, impatience and selfishness. One who has unforgiveness and bitterness will nurse its wounds. Selfishness helps protect and impatience uh, is the epitome of selfishness. The taproot feeding this is bitterness and unforgiveness. Number five, hatred. It's a subtle form of idolatry. Hatred is unforgiveness in full maturity. Unforgiveness that is focused on another person develops hatred. Do you see the cycle here? I don't know if y'all with me or not, but unforgiveness, bitterness, a vicious cycle. You can get caught up in, in, a, in, a, in a mad, um, how do you see it, fury, and, and be all messed up because boo-boo did you wrong, Bebe did you wrong, Maymay did you wrong, come on. Mimi did you wrong, and then you go to church, and the pastor didn't speak to you. The choir director wouldn't put you in the choir. Come on. Well, maybe if you don't, can't sing too good, but they, they love you. Come on. Amen. Come on. And so before you know it, you got all this stuff going on. And then you want to you wanna pray, but you can't. You wonder, why am I not getting through? What's going on? You got some blockages. And when you have walls, it's hard to get through. Do you all understand that? You know, we've, we've, we've dealt with people, that wall comes straight up. You can't get through that wall if the person is not willing to, to put it down. And we're not, we, we can't pull and tug with you. Can I talk to y'all tonight? We, we, we love you, every one of you. We do. But we're not going to pull and tug with you. Come on. I remember a couple few camps ago, brother, I don't know if you remember, brother Colonel, there's a young man that came up and he sat and brother was trying to pray with him. And this, every time he, he would get to him, he would do this right here. Do you know what we did? Backed off. He did not want prayer. Do, do y'all hear me? Come on now. Jesus is here to help you. We didn't come all these miles to play. Every time we come to camp, we come for a reason. Jesus is that reason. Come on now. We came to do the will of God. We can't pull and tug with you, pull and tug with you. Come on here. And you don't want to be free. So if you want to be free, beloved, you can. You've got to understand. If you got some things in your heart that's stopping you, you got some walls up. You got to be willing to put those walls down and forgive. There's some people in here need to really forgive. I like it. It's quiet. Yeah, you really need to forgive. You got to let some folk go. Because you think you're holding them in prison, you're holding yourself in prison. Okay, let me let me keep going. Number four. How to know if you have unforgiveness, impatience, and selfishness. One who has unforgiveness and bitterness will nurse his wounds. I don't know. Did I give you all that one? Okay, good. Oh, y'all got that right. Okay, let's go. Five. Did I give you hatred too? Okay, good. Let's go. Number six. No enduring relationships. This area can affect one's relationships with others, eventually causing more breakups and breakdowns due to bitterness. Number seven, how do you know if you have unforgiveness? Isolation. Bitterness can lead to isolation. It can cause one to build walls up, keeping or preventing others from getting close due to prior hurts and wounds. Proverbs 18 and 1, it says this, a man who isolates himself seeks his own desire. He rages against all wise judgment. In other words, you get wise words, you get good counsel, but yet you go against it because you got walls up, you got prior hurts and wounds, and you, all you're thinking about is they're going to do me the same way the last bunch did. Come on. Right? But you haven't forgiven. You have to lay it down. Number eight, 
heaviness and depression. Heaviness will keep you down. The sin of unforgiveness can also keep you down. So you must get rid of it. Get rid of all sin. Number nine, a lack of manifestation of the gifts of God. Is God moving in your life? Do you see the gifts of the Spirit in operation? Do you feel the presence of God? You, we know God is with us. But it's something about when you get hung up, you don't feel God like you should. You're sad all the time. Something is missing. You can't get in the prayer closet like you really need to. You go to read, and you can read, but it's hollow. You're not really getting fed. Something is wrong. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Something is missing. And we have to get before God and get real and get honest. Okay? God will help you. He's a present help in a time of trouble. Number nine, a lack of manifestation again of the gifts. Okay, unforgiveness and bitterness can sabotage one's life. Bitterness can be very devastating as it can prevent one from moving forward in the Lord. When I went to, through a great time of hurt, uh, one of the things I finally had to face was the enemy was really trying to get me with bitterness. I said, I am not going there. I refuse. And one of the things that helped me, sis, was forgiving quickly. Sister, yeah, my sister, yeah, she just nodded her head to me. Forgiving quickly. I listened to my pastor, and she told me, you must forgive. And she wasn't talking about next week, two months from now, one year from now. Right then, right then when she prayed, she said, you got to forgive right now. So I had to make a choice. Am I going to forgive or am I going to hold it? I chose to forgive. Was the pain there? Yes. Did it still hurt? Yes. But I still had to function. I still had to go on. I still had to face people. Do I have a church tonight? But one thing I can tell you, that when you forgive, God forgives you. He will cleanse you. He will help you. One thing I can say that very night, Brother Merle, I laid down and my sleep was sweet. I didn't toss. I didn't turn. I didn't squall. And I didn't bawl. Do I have a church tonight? God will help you. In the midst of the pain, in the midst of crying, in the midst of not understanding, in the midst of the grief, in the midst of the sorrow, in the midst of the transition, God will help you. But you have to be willing to forgive. God never said you wouldn't get stabbed. But he did say he'd make a way. Come on here. Out of every tribulation, every trial that you'd ever go through, God said, I will make a way out. Glory to God. Hallelujah. In the wilderness, in the desert, do I have a church tonight? When you feel like there's nobody there, God is. The angels will even come. I don't have a church tonight. I'm telling you, God will help you. You may think you don't have a friend, but you do. Jesus will be your friend. Huh? He'll stick closer than a brother. You'll get to know who he is when you get in that power. But you must forgive. Hallelujah. How do you know if you have unforgiveness? Well, what about infirmity? Bitterness can defile the flesh and cause illness. A sad countenance. That's why it ain't good to go around looking all sad. Hmm? <laughs> What's the matter with boo-boo? Child, I don't know. Anyway. Come on, we don't mean no harm now. huh? Y'all done seen people like that? That want you to pity them? Self-pity will not get you out of no trouble. Stroking your flesh is not going to help you. Feeling sorry is not going to help, okay? A sad countenance, chronic guilt. 
Hmm? Chronic is something that goes over and over and over again. Hallelujah. Constant beatings in the mind can cause uh, sabotage to abort your destiny. You all know everybody in here has destiny, right? You weren't just born to be here. Huh? God has a plan for your life. He has destiny for you. If you know unforgiveness and bitterness is in your life, admit it. Allow the Lord to open the area, like if you needed surgery, so he can get to the root cause. So healing and deliverance can take place in your life. Okay? Okay, so reasons for bitterness. Inflicted pain, number one. Inflicted pain. Matthew 5.44 says, But I say unto you, love your enemies. <laughs> Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Now let me tell you, if you do these things, unforgiveness and bitterness will not be your portion. There's no way you can have bitterness and pray for your enemies. Am I, am I in the house or what? Yeah. When you love them, hmm, you love en enough to pray, you hear that boo-boo got sick, and, and all of a sudden your heart of compassion, come on, wonder how boo-boo is. Let me pray for boo-boo. Come on. But if you got unforgiveness in your heart and bitterness, you're not going to pray for boo-boo. Good for him. No. He reaping what he sowed. No. And even if he is, you shouldn't have that kind of attitude. Come on now. Ain't nobody never been there before? Y'all never been there? Yeah? You, you you know, oh, I did you hear? Hear what? Come on now. No, you can't have that in your heart. Okay? Okay, any experience or event that causes pain can open the door to unforgiveness and bitterness. Pain can be in, 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 in inflicted intentionally or unintentionally. Okay? Some people don't mean to hurt you. Do you do all understand what I'm saying? Some don't mean to do it, but some do. Now, them kind of people, this is what I tell you what do. You forgive them, you cut the tie. You don't got to keep being a bullseye. You still have to love them. You understand? Okay. However, it's real, but... That is no excuse. It's no excuse not to forgive and release. One must address the issue as quickly as possible. Anybody told you that? In order to prevent unforgiveness and bitterness from taking place. You don't wait six months. You address it right away. Okay? All right. Number two, reasons for bitterness. False expectations. Matthew 5, 46 says, For if you love them which love you, what reward have you? Do not even the publicans the same? But what about loving those that don't love you? you know, doing good to them that ain't going to say thank you. Don't care about you. We don't want to put ourselves in that situation, though, do we? Huh? It's easier to ignore them. Go the other way. Don't pick up the phone. Don't text them back. All of these things we do to try to just, you know. But what if the Lord say, oh, answer the phone. Send them a text back. Send them a get well card. Okay, I'm going to leave it alone. Huh? Sometimes you may expect things from others that they cannot give you, which is a false expectation, which can lead to bitterness and unforgiveness. In some cases, the other party may not even know what has occurred, and if the issue is not settled, the one who is offended can get buried with bitterness. Sometimes people don't even know what they've done, but we still blame them. Don't go get it right. Come on. What the Bible say? He said, if you find you got an alt, you leave your gift at the altar. You go try to get it right. 
If they don't hear you, you still have to get it right. I had a family member one time who was very angry with me, and to this day I really don't know why, but I went to them. Please forgive me. The person told me off. I'm sitting there going, what did I do? <laughs> when they were all finished, this is what I said. I love you. Please forgive me. That's all I said. I didn't try to defend myself. I didn't try to justify. I just owned it. Come on. Because I didn't want anything in my heart. That relative is gone today. Gone on to be with the Lord. You see, I'm thankful, brother, that I, ha I, I handled it that way. That I didn't get all upset and just say, well, I don't got to be here, and I ain't got to speak to you no more, and I'm done. I didn't do none of that. I just owned it. God took care of it. And he will take care of things when we do it right and we walk the word. Okay. Number three, dominance or control, reasons for bitterness. Matthew 5, 29. Now it says, if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out, cast it from thee, for it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. Now I don't think the Lord wants you to just go pluck your eye out. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> you got to separate from that issue. Get rid of that. Okay? Dominance or control can cause bitterness. Lust can be a source of control, as can addiction. Fear can cause one to not let go of being obsessed or obsession. As a result, bitterness can begin to grow and become a root. We don't often think about these things tied to bitterness, do we? Yeah. All these are like open doors that need to be closed. Okay? Number four, covenant breaking. Matthews 5, 37. But let your communication be yea, yea, nay, nay. For whatsoever is more than these cometh of evil. Covenants that are broken carry consequences and there must be forgiveness when covenant is broken many times in marriage there is bitterness and unforgiveness that can last a lifetime however in other relationships this can also occur especially when things happen in church where people are betrayed relationships destroyed or become disconnected for whatever reason with no restoration or reconciliation. And I'm going to add this. If you don't have a chance to say anything, but yet the relationship is severed. If you're not careful and you don't forgive, you can get bitter about it. In those instances, you must forgive. You have to release it over. Well, Lord, I didn't get to say anything. Well, that's okay. Maybe God just didn't want you to say nothing. You have to let the Lord handle it. And it's hard when relationships get all messed up, isn't it? Because if you don't get a chance to get it straight, you'll have all kind of questions. How come? What did I do? And how come this happened? And I don't understand. Everything was going okay. And now this is going on. And then you feel like your public enemy number one been put on a plaster. You know how they do when it, America's mo most wanted? You know what I'm saying? They they put your name out there or whatever it is, and, and you your picture all blasted on the screen. You're all on YouTube. Come on now. And you 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 ain't even got a YouTube channel, but you're out there. Yeah. Y'all missed it. I'm going to keep on raining this with y'all tonight. Hallelujah. Huh? It's the truth. Your name is all over you. How'd my name get in there? Yeah, I've been there, especially in the church. But that don't mean I don't love the folks. You still got to love people. And you can't look at them crazy. Why y'all looking at me like that? You can't look at people crazy. You can't do it. I know people 
look right in my face, and I know they done talked about me, they done put my, they, they, my name been in their mouth. Come on here. How you doing, boo-boo? It's so good to see you. I ain't seen you since the last camp. How you doing, boo-boo? Why y'all looking like, you know it's the truth. Because if you really got love in your heart, you that's they hang up. It ain't mine. Come on. You got to let people go. Because you know what God will do? He heat cold on the head. <laughs> Every time they see you. Come on here. And then they'll get to a point where, you know what? I got to repent. But like that Brother Randy said, you know, to repent, right? And, you know, I, I love Brother Randy. Brother Randy always, you know something about Brother Randy? Can I tell y'all a secret? You going to pray repentance multiple times. Hmm? Oh, yeah. You come in repenting. You stand up repenting. I ain't making fun. It's the truth. That's what you got to do. When you go home, you repent. You think about Brother Randy. Oh, I repent. Lord, forgive me. No, I'm serious. Y'all, I'm not playing now. Because if you don't repent, you ain't going to heaven. Oops, did I say that, Sister Jane? I said that, didn't I? But we don't think about that, do we? Oh, the Lord loved me. He know you ain't repented, though. Hmm? You get to that door and you, 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 you watch God say, then what you going to do? You going to think about Brother Randy. I should have repented. No, I'm serious. Y'all think I'm playing, but I'm really serious. Come on here. Now, I'm just telling my own testimony. Can I do that? I remember one time I was with Brother Randy, Sister, Sister Callie. They had me in their car, and they talked to me about some stuff. And he, Sister, repeat this after me. I said, oh, Lord Jesus. Now, I'm telling you what I said in my mind. I'm like, what in the world? The Lord said, just do it. Everything he said, I did it. You know why? I want to be right. Y'all don't have to hear me. Hmm? If somebody come to me and they say, sister, I've seen this on you, and I may not have seen it. Does that mean it's wrong? Because I didn't see it? No. Now, if it is wrong what they said, guess who's going to take care of it? God will. He know what to do. Do y'all understand what I'm saying to you? I'm trying to talk about forgiveness. Brother Ray never did nothing to me. I love him. He's my brother. I'm making an example. Because some of y'all don't like when he be praying for you. You just ain't saying it. That's why it's quiet now. Some of y'all see Brother Randy come and you go the other way. You say, oh, no, he too deep. But you know what? God wants to go deep with you because you need to get delivered. And some of y'all come down here playing with God. And you need to stop playing. If you come and you mean real, real, you will get. We deliver, deliverance ministers, we minister all the time. Every one of us that minister. We are no better than, than, than the next person. Understand what I'm saying. We have to do what you do. More so. Because more hits come at us. Every day. Before I get out that door and go home. Something going to come. And then I'm saying, what in the world? Lord Jesus. And I guess what? Forgive. Let it go. And most of the time, can I help you tonight? It's with my own people. I'm a bear. Fall out mad for no reason. I'm upset with you. What did I do to you? Tell you to get straight. Come on here. But you know what? I have to keep a good attitude. I wish I had a church in here tonight. Come on here. You got to walk in forgiveness. Folk misunderstand you. You come to church, you preach a good word, and then at the end, they are offended. And you're standing there looking right blank, you know? Uh, Pastor Bill, can I talk to you? Sure, what, what's wrong? Well, I, I just don't understand what you said. I'm looking at you. Look, you need to go to the altar. We have to deal with these things. Brother Merle have to deal with these things too. Come on here. 
Meanwhile, we're pulling and tugging on you to get right with God. That's the bottom. Come on. Every minister that comes up here, that's, that's their heart. We, we labor up here on the altar. I know I'm saying this. I'm saying it for a reason. We labor. Come on. Two hours, two and a half hours. Run almost into the service trying to help you get free. Come on here. Listen, be serious. Be real. Tomorrow is not promised to you. Today is the day of salvation. Now is the acceptable time. We have to get right now. Some of y'all a little hesitant about coming up for prayer. I ain't talked to nobody. I could just see it though. I ain't going up there on that altar with you. I'm gonna just watch. That's okay. You can watch. But Jesus loves you. Come on now. And when you come, listen. If you're serious, it don't take long. Y'all understand what I'm saying? We know sometimes, you know, we have to lay with people. And that's okay because I, I will sit with you no matter how long it takes, as long as you're serious. But if you're not, you got walls up, we'll pray for you. Say, God bless. Come back tomorrow. Okay, let me keep going. Okay. Brother, brother, brother I hope it's okay. <laughs> okay, covenant. You don't want to be a covenant breaker. Let me keep moving. Okay. Exodus 15, 25. And he cried unto the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree, which when he had cast it into the waters, the waters were made sweet. Now, this was when uh, uh, the people had gotten all upset because they didn't have no water. The water was bitter. Ain't nobody going to drink no bitter water. Right? Well, it's, it's just as hard dealing with somebody that is bitter. Okay, so if you know that you're dealing with bitterness, be honest about it. And let's get free. Okay, forgiveness is a must. Emotions will rage against forgiving. However, it is a choice, and you do have the power to forgive. The Bible says in Proverbs 18, 21, death and life is in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Forgiveness is not condoning or overlooking. It's not, uh, in other words, it's just not letting people off the hook. In other words, they because they will, people will reap what they sow. You will reap what you sow now. But that's not up to us to see that they reap. The Bible says, God said, vengeance is mine, said the Lord, I'll repay. It ain't for me to repay boo-boo for doing me wrong or baby or may may. All right. I use the words all the time. Yeah. Them safe words. Nobody know who they are. And I'm really not talking about nobody. OK. Hallelujah. But one day in heaven, I'm going to see boo-boo, may may and Mimi. Amen. OK. <laughs> so forgiveness is not condoning or overlooking. It is not saying that what was done was right. Forgiveness does not hinge on right or wrong. We forgive because God forgives. Forgive everybody and everything. Okay? Forgive it all. People, you got to forgive everybody. Everyone, regardless of what they have ever done to you or not done. No exceptions. Forgive. I'm almost done. Jesus wants you to be healed. Number one, he wants us to be healed. Most who suffer bitterness carry wounds that are unhealed. To continue in unforgiveness will keep the wound from getting healed. Eventually, the physical body will be affected. God can and will emotional heal emotional wounds when we ask him, and I want to read Isaiah 55, verse number 5. Isaiah 55, verse number 5. That might be the wrong one. Okay. I think it's, it should be 53 and 5. Sorry. Isaiah 53 Verse 5, 
it says, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. So the Lord was chastised for us. He was corrected. He was whipped. He was beaten for us. He hadn't done anything wrong. Okay? He was bruised because of our iniquities. Mm -hmm. He took it all so that we might be free. Number two, you got to forgive yourself. When you find that you've not forgiven yourself, you must let yourself out of the box. Forgive yourself. When you fail to forgive yourself, you're saying God has not forgiven you. He doesn't hold it to your charge. Okay? From this uh, comes self-condemnation and guilt, leaving you dysfunctional in many areas of life. Number three, continue to forgive. When memories attempt to plague you, forgive. Ask the Lord to remove the feelings from what you may be thinking. Ask the Lord to help you through it. This is the thing when things come to your mind. First of all, you need to be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and the word of God will renew you every single day. What really begin to bring change in my life, brother, brother, brother Ray, was the word. When I began to pray the word for myself, that's when change began to take place because I began to think differently. I began to think like the word said. What does the word say? Even about me. Hmm? Some of you may not have a good view of yourself. Well, why don't you find out who you are from the word? Ask the Lord to show you who you are. Amen. I like that, sis. You're smiling. That's good. He will show you. Come on. I used to didn't like to even look in the mirror. All that stuff. I, I like looking in the mirror. That's okay. Come on. You know why? I'm accepted in the beloved. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. Come on. He's the apple of, I'm the apple of his eye. Come on. His eyes run to and fro to take care of me. Come on. Hmm? So when you know who you are in God, your life will change because your view of yourself will change. And you'll begin to see yourself the way God sees you, not the way you see you and not the way people see you. Because you know what they'll do? Keep you in a box. When God begins to reveal who you really are, you will change. Come on. I had someone tell me that not long ago. I said, you, you've been suppressed. Pe you, people really don't know who you are. And I'm like, oh, okay. He said, but uh, uh, the word that, 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 that God gave me was, God's going to begin to show you who you are. He's talking about me. I'm like, oh, okay. When you begin to see yourself the way God sees you, you'll begin to grapple with destiny because you'll walk in who you are. You will not stay in that low place. You will not stay in Lodabar. Do I have a church? Come on. And, and, and the thing about it is God puts people in your pathway to cheer you on. Hmm? He did that for me. Come on, put people in my, Sister Bells, you need to do this. Sister Bells, that. Sister Bells, what, what? Why do they, why they keep calling Sister Bells? What you mean? Come on. But it was God calling me. And God's calling you. Wanting you to get out of your comfort zone. Get in the path that God has for you. Let him make you. Let him mold you. He knows how to do it. He spared your life is for a reason. You're not here just to be here. Huh? God's got a blessing for you, but he also has a plan. Okay, continue to forgive. Let me see. No matter how many times you may have to forgive, do it. Remember what the Lord has done for you, and do not allow the enemy to bombard you with thoughts of the past or the past things that may have occurred. So how do you forgive? Number one, 
you choose to forgive. It is an act of your will. You push past emotions, you take authority over thoughts, and you do not give in to the flesh and carnality. You be willing to die to the situation. And I'm telling you something. When you die to it, you won't even remember the stuff that happened. Somebody could say, well, you know, such and so, and you look at them crazy like, huh? No, I don't know nothing about it. And I'm going to tell you why you can say that, because God takes the sting away. He take all that foolishness away. So you don't have to relive that no more. Do you understand? Y'all really understand what I'm saying? I pray so. Come on here. People will try to put you back in a box. You say, I ain't going back in that box. You go in there. Okay, number two. Repent of actions and attitudes. As a matter of fact, if you want to go in there, you go in there, you shut the door, and you stay. I'm going this way. Don't let the enemy put you back in that foolishness when God bring you out and you know you're out. Why are you going to go back to prison? Huh? No. And you tell the devil no, you tell yourself no. So most of the time, it ain't even the devil doing it, it's you. The devil don't come at you bugging you that much. He got other things to do. Anyway, I ain't going there. He got time to keep plaguing you because he already got you in that way. So why he going to keep talking to you? Come on here. I know it's quiet now because some of us really, you believe so much what the devil is saying. And when we give you the word, you don't believe us. Come on here. It's the truth. Well, God's word is true. And Jesus' blood he shed was real. Real drops of blood. Come on here. All them thorns on his head and all them bruises on his back. And you want to come tell us about the devil? I'm being nice tonight, staying behind this microphone. The Lord told me to stand still. So, Patty, that's the only reason why I'm standing still. I'm standing still because he told me when I was old, stand still now. Don't you get out. Don't you go. Don't walk. But I'm here to tell you tonight, God wants you to stand up and be the men and women of God that you know you can be in God and put the devil in his place and put him on the run. Hallelujah. So number one, you choose to forgive. Number two, you repent of actions and attitudes. This is why repentance is so important. Change your mind for the better. That is what repentance is. You make a conscious choice to turn and go the other way. Now, that's what repentance is. It's not just saying I repent and you're still going the same way. Huh? Because if you repent, can I can I use you, sister, for a minute? Can you come up here, please? Just come stand right here. Okay? Right here. Turn this way. All right. Now you repent. Then what you going to do? There you go that way. No, you don't look around. Why can't you go back? What, what you doing? No, see, that's what they, that, that's what, okay. But when you repent, when you repent, okay, I need one, Brother Ray, come help me because I can't move. <laughs> when you repent, you go that way. Now, I want you to talk to try to get her to turn. Let's see what you do. Go on, turn. Well, she went that way. You don't go back. That's my point I'm trying to make. Every time you go back, guess what happens? You have the potential to get seven times worse. So when you repent, you got to keep going. You don't go back. The things that God has freed me from, Sister Jean, I have not gone back.
even though it's been a little rough. Not to talk about Boo Boo and wish Boo Boo bad. Y'all, yeah. They, 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 they don't want to hear that. Uh, you know, just one time can I just see get knocked upside the head. No, not even one time. I've had people had do stuff to me, and then I find out a few years down the road they've been sick, almost died, all this stuff here. You know what I do? Lord, touch them. Lord, be with them. Lord, you know what to do for them. Come on, somebody. When you repent, you go on and follow the Lord. Because this is what God does for you when you repent and he forgives you. He gives you another chance. I have to stay right here. He gives you the chance to go again. And he wipes the slate clean. He don't remember it no more. If you read the book of Jeremiah, how many times God called his people? How many times he, he wanted the people to come back? He gave them chance after chance. He did not want to destroy his own people. But he will do it if we don't live right. And if we don't come out of sin, he will judge you. So it's a dangerous thing to come you know you get free, and you go back. You can't keep doing that. Come on. God is a just God. But if he pulls his anointing off of you, the spirit of God off of you, he has a right to do it. Y'all hear me? He must forgive. So when you repent, you go the other way. Now, let me tell you this. Repenting is not saying, I'm sorry. Y'all know how y'all do, right? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What are you sorry for? That's not repentance. You got you to gotta make a change. Come on. Because if you're sorry, we understand you feel bad. Feel bad, you maybe got caught. Maybe the cover has been uncovered. Got exposed. Uh huh. But you got to be willing to repent. Let me keep moving. Repent of actions and attitudes. Change your mind for the better. Okay, you make a conscious choice to turn and go the other way. You stop hating, you stop hurting, you stop being mad, you stop feeling sorry for yourself, you stop the self pity, you stop the woe is me, you stop the I am the only one. Come on, <laughs> huh? Don't nobody understand all that. And you stop the mindset to get even. You got to let it all go. Okay? So we're going to pray now. So we stand to our feet. And all I'm going to do tonight, I know we've had a lot of deliverance. Yes, we're going to get some more. But all the Lord told me to do was pray this prayer. So I'm going to follow what God told me. Is that all right? So if you would pray with me tonight and just, we're just going to, I want you to repeat this prayer. Dear Lord, we come to you thanking you for your word. We thank you for the love you have for us. Thank you for sending Jesus Christ to die on the cross for our sins. Thank you, Father for sending the Holy Spirit to baptize us in the Spirit so that we might have a life pleasing to you. Father, we confess that there are those 
that we've held in bondage to unforgiveness and sometimes have caused bitterness to take root in our lives. We ask you, Lord, forgive us for all unforgiveness, all roots of bitterness. In the name of Jesus, cleanse us of all sin, known and unknown. Cleanse us of all iniquity, malice, hatred, anger, envy, jealousy that has been held up in our lives. Lord, we ask forgiveness for the desire to retaliate, to get even, or take revenge on those that have harmed and hurt us. Help us not to hold anything to their charge. Forgive us for the way we have treated others as a result of the hurt and things we may have gone through. Forgive us for the way we've treated others as a result of the hurt and things we've gone through. Help us, Lord, to walk in all of your word concerning forgiveness. As you have said, we must forgive in order to receive forgiveness from you. I thank you, Lord, for an obedient heart, an obedient mind, and an obedient soul. Thank you for cleansing all emotions from damage, hurt, pain, abuse, and wounds in the name of Jesus. Help us, Lord, to forgive everyone, living or dead, as you bring the names before us. Now, let's stop one minute. Any names come at you right now, come to you now? Just stop. Ask the Lord to forgive. Release it. And when you finish, just sit down and then we'll finish this prayer. All right, now let's stand to our feet and we'll finish the prayer. Say, Lord, cleanse me from all unforgiveness. 
and bitterness. Dig up all roots of bitterness in Jesus' name. Thank you for the freedom that you give in the name of Jesus. I pray strength for those who have offended. I ask you, Lord, to bless them in the name of Jesus. Now, let me pray for you. Father, I thank you for each and every one. I thank you for the word of God tonight. And I pray that you encourage each and every one of your men servants and maidservants in the name of Jesus. Let them know that they are more than conquerors because of what you have done for them, Jesus, and what you are doing for them in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you for your healing virtue. I thank you now that the power of God is surging through each and every one of them. I thank you for your cleansing. I thank you for freedom. I thank you for wholeness in Jesus' name. We thank you for the word of God. Continue to do only that that you can do in their lives, in the mighty name of Jesus. And we thank you and we praise you for it all. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. If you don't mind, clap them hands for the Lord tonight. And Father, I pray rest for your precious men and women of God. I pray strength. I pray that you continue to pour into them, Lord God, as they take their rest, oh God. And Lord, we thank you and we praise you. I pray for each and every one on Zoom. I pray, God, that you minister to them as well. I pray strength for them, and I pray, oh God, that you continue to work in their lives. We thank you, and we praise you for freedom. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you. Good night.